Happy Pride Month, parents. You're listening to the Project Parenthood Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Nanika Kaur, clinical psychologist and respectful parenting therapist. Each week, I'll introduce you to the same respectful parenting practices that I use to help parents repair and deepen connections with their children. You'll get tips for cultivating more parental self-compassion, more cooperation from your kids, and more joy, peace, and resilience in your relationship with them. In today's episode, in honor of Pride Month, I'm talking about ways to support and affirm trans and gender-diverse kids. Stick around till the end for ways to think about cisgender privilege. What do you do when your child doesn't fit neatly into society's rigid gender binary that says boys and girls have to dress, behave, and think in narrowly defined ways depending on the category their sex chromosomes put them in, XX for female or XY for male? When forcing your child into that arbitrary binary doesn't line up with your respectful parenting values, what are your other options? Great question. Here are six ideas for supporting your trans or gender-diverse child. Follow your child's lead. Parents find out their child is gender non-conforming in many different ways, but what I often see in my practice is a lot of gender exploration in the toddler years. Sometimes toddlers are insistent that people referring to them as a girl are completely wrong, and they emphatically and repeatedly declare that they're a boy, or vice versa. Sometimes they aren't correcting anyone. Adults are saying that they're a girl, and they're not contradicting that. But they aren't interested in adhering to any rules about what girls are supposed to wear, play with, or enjoy. They do what they want. And perhaps adults would categorize those clothes or activities as boy things. Other kids seem to go back and forth, stating they're a girl one day and a boy the next. Or maybe they insist that they're both, or neither. However you find out, or however long their period of exploration, try as best you can to go with it. Let them wear what they want to wear and play with whatever toys they wish. It can be really hard to trust your child to know who they are at such a young age, or settle into a wait-and-see stance, but that's really what's best for your kid. It may take time and space for them to figure out what feels most true for them. And remember, gender isn't something that's fixed but can evolve over one's lifetime. The important thing is to meet their unique gender expression with sensitivity, understanding, and acceptance, and let them know that they're supported by their family no matter the outcome. Educate yourself. It's important to increase your gender literacy, use correct terminology, and continue to learn about and confront your own gender biases. In the end, much of the distress gender nonconforming children sometimes feel is less about their gender diversity and more about society's lack of education, acceptance, and affirmation. Be on the lookout for any emotional problems in your child, such as low self-esteem, social isolation, depression, anxiety, self-harm, or suicidality that might indicate the need for mental health support. Connect yourself, your child, and your family to your local LGBTQ plus organizations, communities, and events so that both you and your child can deepen your understandings of the realities that gender nonconforming kids face, and also so that your family knows that you're not alone. Openly challenge gender stereotypes, biases, and assumptions. As the parent of a gender diverse child, it's important to challenge the gender stereotypes you and your child are exposed to. But all parents can do their part to relieve the burden on families with transgender members of being the only ones educating those around them. Here are some suggestions. Try your best not to assume the gender of the children and adults you and your children encounter. Expose your children to as much gender diversity as possible. Make sure your home library The media kids consume, the toys they play with, reflect gender diversity along with all the other kinds of diversity. Don't participate in gender reveal parties. This feeds the stereotypical gender binary assumption. A newborn's genitalia doesn't predict their gender identity or what colors or hobbies or romantic partner they will prefer in the future. Stand up for your child's gender expression and that of other children 
and encourage all of your children to be the ones to stand up for and be co-conspirators with and for other gender nonconforming kids. Let kids know that they don't have to accept what they read, see on TV, or hear on the playground as objective reality. They can form their own opinions. Practice simple phrases with your child to have ready in response to naysayers, like, In our family, there's no such thing as a girl's or a boy's bathing suit. Clothes are for anyone who fits into them that wants to wear them. Swimsuits are for everyone. What makes it a girl's swimsuit? Or... What makes it a boy's swimsuit? Well, it's my swimsuit, and I'm not a girl or a boy, so it's not a girl or a boy swimsuit. Use inclusive language that normalizes gender diversity. Many adults don't realize how gendered everyday language can be. Here are some ways you can use language that creates safety for your gender-diverse child and all children. When referring to others whose gender identity you don't know for sure, use terms like child, person, or they. Introduce yourself to others with your pronouns. This invites others to share theirs if they want to. Model using family-inclusive language to remind kids that families come in many different configurations. Remember that not every adult accompanying a child identifies as that child's parent, and that not every child has a parent, and not every child has a mother and a father who are a romantic couple. When you're unsure of an adult's relationship status, say nothing. Or use terms like partner or spouse if you're unsure who an adult is in a relationship with. Also, avoid discussing the presence or lack of family resemblance. When you're unsure of adult-child connections, genders, or when addressing groups, use terms like grown-ups, adults, caregivers, child or children, kids, folks, or people. Use gender-neutral language to describe professions and careers. For instance, terms that imply a job can be done by only a man or a woman can be made neutral, like police officer, ballet dancer, firefighter, or cafeteria worker. Using neutral language shows that you don't subscribe to a rigid gender binary, and gender doesn't limit your child's possibilities in life. Think and speak beyond the binary when it comes to romantic relationships so your child knows that you welcome who they are right now and whoever they turn out to be. This way your child won't have to wonder if you'll accept them if they don't fit the binary. Model the awareness that gender and romantic attraction are fluid so your child feels confidence and resilience around their own identity and the identities of others. Advocate for your child. You're your child's rock. You may have to advocate for your child with family and friends, at their school or in your community. It's up to you to make sure they feel loved, like they have someone they can trust and rely on who respects their gender identity expression. Don't underestimate the protective impact of parental support. Because we're still waiting for more widespread acceptance, you might find yourself experiencing conflict with extended family, resulting in you having to set boundaries with them to protect your child's emotional safety. Remind family members that they can hold on to their histories and family culture and still allow for the breaking of the mold and the challenging of the status quo. At school, you may have to push back against the system for your child to be able to use bathrooms and locker rooms that are safe and comfortable for them, and for school staff and peers to use your child's preferred name and pronouns. Get involved along with your child in activism organizations, and support networks that lift up and make the world safer for transgender and non-binary folks. Find support for yourself as a parent. You might have a lot of big feelings when your child shares that they're trans or gender non-conforming in some way. You might have to shift and redefine your entire worldview around your relationship with this child. There will likely be a period of mourning, fear, and sadness for the life with your child you thought you would have, or anticipatory grief about the hardships you imagine they'll face in the future? Will people deny them their moral or legal rights as a human being? Will they be physically safe from those who would be harmful? What about all the dreams you had for their future? How will this impact them at the intersection of their other marginalized identities? It's hard enough to live outside the gender binary on its own, but when you add white supremacy, racism, ableism, and all the other isms— 
How will your child cope and survive? The best thing you can do is educate yourself and have a safe space to process your fears and uncertainties in ways that don't make who your child is responsible for your emotional experience. You need someone who will listen to your complex feelings and all the questions you don't have answers for yet. Forming gender-diverse kinships outside of your family helps to expand your community of care, justice, and love that your child can feel safe within. Connecting with other families raising gender non-conforming kids through support groups can be a source of support for the whole family, particularly when it comes to navigating social and physical gender transitions. These groups give the opportunity to learn about legal, medical, and school issues and receive emotional support. You might seek therapy for the whole family and its individual family members as well. Family therapy can be a place of refuge where everyone can be honest and your gender-diverse child's identity is nurtured. It's valid for family members to have fears around your child's gender expression, but it's unsupportive to express those fears and uncertainties to your child. In therapy, you can build self-awareness and emotional regulation that can strengthen your relationship with your gender non-conforming child, all of which are beneficial to your child's well-being and social-emotional development. In addition to seeking external support, it's also important to engage in self-care. I offer mindful self-care strategies in the episode, Three Strategies for Becoming a Better Parent. Challenge yourself. I'm challenging folks this week to think about cisgender privilege. If you have a gender non-conforming child, especially if you're a parent whose biological sex matches your gender identity, this is called cisgender, It's important to recognize the privileges you benefit from in life that your child does not, things you don't have to put up with or consider in your daily life. For instance, if you're a cisgender parent who conceived your child naturally, you had the privilege of being able to achieve pregnancy without spending thousands of dollars to become a parent. Contribute to making the world a more gender diversity friendly place for your child and all children by becoming more aware of how you may transition between being affected by various forms of gender oppression and how you may unintentionally be the perpetrator of gender oppression. Does understanding your cisgender privilege help decrease any unconscious assumptions that cisgender identity is the preferred identity and other identities are deviant or that everyone you meet is cisgender? Let me know your thoughts. Your ability to be a gender-affirming parent directly impacts your child's psychological and physical health, academic performance, and their relationships, both now and in the future. At the same time, because society doesn't make a ton of room for gender diversity, it makes sense that you might have a lot of fears about your child's future safety and inclusion. Lack of exposure to the reality of gender diversity might also mean that you just don't know a lot about it, and that's okay. Educate yourself. Process your feelings with a mental health clinician or other trusted adults, and make sure you're not projecting your worries onto your child in the forms of dismissals, pleading with them to be different, or forcing them to conform to society's rigid gender expectations. And remember that getting support for your family as a group and or as individuals can also help everyone feel more secure. Children only thrive when they're being seen, heard, and valued for exactly who they are. So celebrate who they are. Shower your amazing gender-diverse child with love and acceptance. This is what will be the foundation for the resilience they'll need as they venture forth into the world as their authentic selves. I hope that's helpful. You can learn more about my work with parents at www.brooklynparenttherapy.com and on Instagram at BKParents. That's B-K-P-A-R-E. NTS. If you have more questions about raising gender non-conforming kids or any other parenting questions or stories, leave me a message at 646-926-3243 and be sure to let me know if it's okay to use your voice on the show or send an email to parenthood at quickanddirtytips.com. And don't forget to subscribe to Project Parenthood on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Project Parenthood is a quick and dirty tips podcast. It's audio engineered by Dan Firebend with script editing by Adam Cecil. 
Our podcasting and advertising operations specialist is Morgan Christensen. Our assistant manager is Emily Miller. Our marketing and publicity assistant is Davina Tomlin. And our intern is Brendan Pika. That's all for this episode. Catch you next week.